Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this stylized smoky displacement effect. So let's look at our project setup, 1920, 1080, 25 frames a second and a duration of 10 seconds. Now, because you don't want to sit there watching me type, I'm just going to paste in some text. I've used Gaudi old style, I've made it nice and big, and I've centered it up in the frame, just the line spacing. Anyway, you can use whatever text you want. This is just an example. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in to generators and grab a color solid, drop that behind the text and make it black. The next thing I want to do is to set up a displacement map. And to do that, let's make a new group. And I'm just going to copy that color solid since it's handily there. So Alt or Option drag it into that new group there. We can turn this group off. We don't actually need to see it. I'm going to come to generators and I'm going to drop in a noise. And I'm also going to add a clouds. I want the color solid to be above the noise. I want to come into the clouds. So let's set its horizontal and vertical scale to 64. Let's have a speed of 0.1. And I'm also going to come into the offset here and apply a ramp behavior to that Y offset. Set the end value to 1. So I'm also going to just come to the clouds and set their blend mode to multiply. And I'm going to take my color solid and I'm going to come to its Y position and set that to negative 540. Actually, let's just have a look at what we're doing here. So you can see we've now got some noise and some clouds. And if we play it, it looks like that. And what I need to do is I need to soften off the edge of this black box here. So select the color solid, come to filters, blur, directional blur, set the angle to 90. And let's set the amount to 240. Just softens that off nicely like that. So then what I'm going to do is come to this group here and I'm going to add distortion and bump map. And I'm going to take my group that I've made and add it to the source well there. And I'm going to set the direction to zero and the amount to 0.4. And let's turn off this displacement group. And we're not seeing anything. And that's because I forgot to set the displace group to fixed resolution. And you can see the difference that makes. We've now got this. I think what I might do is swap the direction of that bump map, so 180 instead of zero. And you can see it's now displacing upwards. So what I want is for the bottom half of the screen to displace downwards. And if you've watched my bi-directional displace tutorial, you know that you have to be a little bit clever to do that. So what I'm going to do is call our first displacement group upper and I'm going to duplicate it. So right click duplicate. Let's call this one lower. So let's open it up. Actually, let's look at it so you can see what we're doing here. Select that color solid. Instead of negative 540 for that Y position, we're going to go for positive 540. And let's come into the clouds and we want these clouds to go the opposite way. So let's set the end value to negative one, and they're going to go down like that. So then we can hide this group and we can duplicate this bump map filter. So right click duplicate and we can use the lower as the image map for it. Drop that in there and set the direction to zero. And the combined effect of that is that we've got bi-directional displace. We're displacing upwards with our upper group and downwards with our lower group. So that's how you do a bidirectional bi displace. You've got to create separate image maps for both directions and just add two versions of the filter. So it's looking OK, but it's not really very interesting, I don't think. And what we actually want in here is some blur. And I'm actually going to use a compound blur. And I'll explain all about that in just one second. First of all, I just want to make a new group at the top here. And I want to drop my other two groups into it. And I want to turn them both on again. And this one that's on top, that's actually called lower, let's set its blend mode to linear dodge. So now you can see there 
combining like that. And let's call this group all. And again, let's actually just set it to fixed resolution. Let's now look at adding this blur. So let's turn off that all group. Let's select this group here and come to blur and compound blur. I'm just going to drop that below the bump maps and then I'm going to use the all group as the source. And I'm going to set the amount to 240. And now you can see we're blurring where we're displacing. And I think that's much nicer. I turn off the two bump maps. You can see how that works as well. Let's play it. It's quite an interesting effect on its own already, but with the displacement, it's even more interesting. We can get that really nice smoky effect. So another thing I want to do is come to this all group here and I want to add to it color and threshold. And I'm going to go with a threshold of 0.1 and so smoothness of 0.15 is good. And that you can see that's made a major difference because we're increasing the intensity of the white areas and we're clipping the black areas more. So it now looks like this, all very dramatic and exciting. So what else can we do? I want to come into these two groups here, the upper and lower, and I want to select the clouds, come to properties, and I just want to knock back the opacity. You'll notice that in the areas where we're not applying any blur or displacement, it's all a little bit too clean. And we can make it less clean by just knocking that back opacity back just a fraction. So 98%, you can see that on the top there. Let's do the same thing with the other clouds, 98%. So the effect of that is to give us a slightly more organic look. Everything kind of blends in a bit, little bit better, I think. So another thing we could do here is we could add to this group a vignette. So let's just do that. And let's increase the size all the way up. Let's maybe increase the blur amount all the way up. And let's just play with the darken a bit like that, just to darken in the sides. That gives us this sort of effect. I'm also just going to drop in a color and levels, drop it behind the vignette, and maybe just crunch in the black and white a little bit here. But I want to show you what happens if we come back to our threshold here on the all group, and we reduce that threshold value. I'm going to go for 0 0.05. And then we can use our levels here to get a really interesting kind of ghostly look to it. Just pull them in like that. And that's for a horror film or something would be a, a pretty nice look, I think. We've probably gone a little bit far with our compound blur, of course. Let's let's maybe knock that back to, say, 180, just so we can read a little bit more of our text. But really, this is not about kind of making a finished result. It's just about giving you the basic understanding of the idea. So that compound blur is a really nice effect, I think. If you look at the difference between that and that, it's, it's completely changed the whole feel of it. So I hope that's been useful. Thanks very much indeed for watching. I'll see you again soon.